So welcome back students. So we are into our second module and uh, we are going to the inorganic chemical industries, the first part and the next module we will cover the inorganic chemical industries part 2. So we have already seen the sources of sulphur and then we have also seen the sulphur sulfuric acid production in the previous lectures. So sulfuric acid production we have seen using the double contact process. Okay. So we then saw the advantage disadvantages. So these methods actually bring us to the point what is the source of this sulfuric acid. So we have seen the source is sulfur dioxide and the source of sulfur dioxide is from the elemental sulfur which is not available. So what we do is we produce it through hydrogen sulfide. So hydrogen sulfide is one of the common uh, off gas or is a byproduct of several processes. We will see from where the source is. So the today's lecture we will mainly focus on the production of the sulphur production that is through the Claus process. So, so we will see what is the source of this hydrogen sulphide because from this hydrogen sulphide we produce elemental sulphur, we produce elemental sulphur. So uh, you know the elemental sulphur is uh, Sn, so N can be going from 1 to 8. So depending upon whether the form of liquid of sulphur is whether it is in liquid or it is solid or in vapor. So based on that we get elemental sulphur. Okay. So prime focus on this particular lecture is how to produce this elemental sulphur from the source. So some of the source may be direct pyrites, some may be from the hydrogen sulphide gas. So here we are talking about the sources of hydrogen sulphide gas as a source then the acid gas treatment. Now the acid gas if I talk of acid gas treatment I will tell you what is the difference between acid gas and sour gas. Then we will see the process through which elemental sulphur is produced, the reactions and the thermodynamics of the process, the flow scheme and then some improvement how to recover the entire sulphur from the process. The two processes that is the Scott process and super class process. Scott means the class of treating process. Okay, so super, the clause of treating process, the super clause process is something an improvement of the particular uh, the sulphur process which is, uh, which is like uh, both this process the Scott process and the super clause process. Scott is actually S stands for shell, shell clause of treating process. So it means whatever sulphur we actually reduce in the clause process remaining the amount are uh, used or it is recovered through these two processes, the Scott process and the super class process. And then another process which is although the scale is less is the liquid redox sulphur recovery process. We will see one by one all the processes. So now what is the source of hydrogen sulphide? First the raw material that is the source of elemental sulphur, the hydrogen sulphide. Now hydrogen sulphide can be obtained as an acid gas from different plant units. So what are the different plant units? If I talk about what are those sources? So acid gas if I talk strictly in terms of definition it may include carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphur and carbonyl sulphide. So this if you see this uh, COS, CS2 carbon disulphide and uh, CO2. So all this we call this isoelectronic. So isoelectronic means that uh, it will have a similar structure but with different elements. So the bond lengths concerning the three atoms are similar but with different elements. So that is why these compounds have been clubbed together. Then I have also written this CS2 is same as CO2 which is equal to carbonyl sulphide. So all these three are the potential sources for the production of sulphur, elemental sulphur. So other sulphur containing feedstocks are sour natural gas. So natural gas has impurities such as CO2 and H2S, most of the natural gas has impurities such as CO2 and H2S. So this needs to be removed, okay. this needs to be removed from natural gas before it is sent to some particular application. So natural gas should be free from any sulphur. So we need to remove this. So when you remove this obviously this byproduct can be used as a source of sulphur. So that is what the sulphur comes from or it can be also from the off gases from hydrogen units. So if I recollect I if you recollect the last lecture I already told that where does this hydrotreating process means or imply come from. So it is like you have this 5 membered lake let us say for example you have this desulphurization. So if the talk about desulphurization let us suppose I talk about of a 5 membered ring which is thiophene. 
So, if you do a hydrogenation of this thiophene, so you will get a compound which is something like this plus H2S. Okay. So, it means uh, this hydrogenating means to remove the heteroatom. So, this is your heteroatom. So, obviously, what is the byproduct? So, delta H is something negative, I do, delta H is negative. So, it is exothermic in nature. So, we convert this in a catalytic manner, we produce a linear chain alkane and H2S or the hydrogen sulphide gas or from coal gasification plants. There also if you have a coal which is rich in sulphur, you may generate H2S gas. So, that H2S gas or this H2S gas or from here in the sour natural gas, all are potential sources for elemental sulphur. So, this H2S can be separated by treating with chemical adsorbents such as alkanolamines. So, for alkanolamines to be useful to separate, it is either chemically it will react with this alkanolamine and so there will be two process, one is absorbent, then we have regenerate. So, absorb means chemically it is getting absorbed, whether it is chemically or physically, because we are talking ethylenamine, it is chemical. If we are talking about physical solvents, there are certain physical solvents. For example, so these are chemical solvents, the alkanolamines which I have written here. So, if you want, you can just mention it, these are chemical solvents, chemical While there are certain physical solvents also which can recover this H2S and CO2. So, physical solvent may be methanol or propylene carbonate. So, chemical solvents if I want to focus on, it should have a high solubility in water solution of 15 to 30 percent are commonly used because why water? Because this a, some of the compounds for example, this COS carbonyl sulphide needs to be hydrolyzed in water in the presence of catalyst. So, when you do a hydrolysis again it gets converted to hydrogen sulphide. So, that is what it is important. So, we have a high solubility in water. It should be low volatile, this alkanolamine should be low volatile, it should have good reactivity at relatively low cost and it should be good flexibility in design and operation. Okay. So, with this we dis just now have seen what are the sources of this elemental sulphur, it is primarily hydrogen sulphide and this hydrogen sulphide are obtained from three sources primarily, one is the natural gas, one is the hydrating unit that is oil refined, another is the coal gasification. So, you have to keep in mind this three sources are the byproducts for the formation of elemental sulphur. So, for example, this particular elemental sulphur as I told you uh, this pretreatment. So, in the pretreatment, the first step is the pretreatment why you require because uh, carbonyl sulphide is present in minor amount in gas stream it and must be pretreated to avoid adverse effects on subsequent processes. So, as to remove this carbonyl sulphide, catalytic hydrolysis is used which actually converts this into hydrogen sulphide. So, if there is some carbonyl sulphide present, you do a catalysis with water to form the source the raw material plus carbon dioxide. So, in a way you are again converted to CO2, but uh, most of the plants they are fully equipped to separate both these, these together these are called acid gas. So, this sour gas sometimes you call it sour gas. So, the primary difference between acid gas and sour gas is sour gas usually reflects the composition of H2S explicitly, while acid gas comes up together carbon dioxide plus H2S. Okay. So, this you should understand because now from now on we will discuss and use the term acid and sour gas interchangeably. So, what is this um, acid gas treatment? As I told you just now I discussed these are the chemical solvents usually separates the H2S gas because these chemical solvents either it is monoethanolamine, di diethanolamine or methyl ethanol diamine MDEA, these exhibits high mass transfer rates. So, the acid gas, so this is the gas where you have SeO plus H2S, it actually passes through this alkanolamine solution. So, it is close to if I recall it correctly, it was 24 trays and the absorption is occurring at this temperature. So, what you have remaining is the purified gas. So, this purified gas can be sent to some incinerator and burnt. Okay. So, it the remaining product with the alkanolamine rich, so I will say the sour gas rich alkanolamine solution, 
it actually gets heated by the bottom product of regenerator. So, when the pass heat is passed, it gets heated up and it is sent from the to the top of the regenerated tower. So, what you have in regenerator is already a lean alkalinamine solution. So, uh, what you do is, I am sorry, it is not lean alkalinamine solution. So, you have the C. What happens in the absorber is both the CO2 and H2S get attached to this alkalinamine. Then this solution goes after heating to a stripper. So, regenerator is a stripper. This is a stripper. So, the stripper implies that you provide low pressure steam. So, you provide low pressure steam so that the H2S and CO2, the acid gas gets separated out here. So, the acid gas separate out because it will condense out when you take the top product condenses out and when it, it is condensed then the remaining the H2S and CO2 is taken to the sulphur recovery unit. So, CO2 will be very less here, so, most of the CO2 will be passing out through a purified gas and the H2S gas is coming out is sent to the cloth process. So, when uh, it is stripped off, when you are passing steam through this particular regenerator, it is stripped off then the lean solution, the lean alkalinamine solution after it is giving away heat, it is again sent back to the absorber. So, it is like this absorber and regenerator happens cyclically. So, one cycle you have absorption, the next cycle you have regeneration like that, it keeps on moving to and fro like this, to and fro like this. So, this is the way you actually treat the acid gas that is remove the H2S and CO2. So, what is the cloth process? See overall I can always write this expression. So, hydrogen sulphide. Uh, oxidizes to form elemental sulfur and water. But the issue is it is high enthalpy. So, the problem is the temperature rises. Because temperature rises, because of the thermodynamic limit, the conversion is hardly 50 or 60 percent. So, which is not good. So, you do not want something process to be developed, even though it is a single step process, you do not want it to go till 50 60 percent conversion. So, what it is done is we need this a conversion of close to 95 to 97 percent. So, hydrogen sulphide needs to be converted to elemental sulphur such that the conversion is around 95 to 97 percent. So, what you do instead of complete oxidation you do a partial oxidation. So, it means you send a H2S gas in such a manner you send a limited amount of air or oxygen to it, it converts to elemental sulphur and water. So, this is highly exothermic reaction is this. So, now this elemental sulphur because since H2S is already there not all will be converted this overall reaction not all will be converted in a single step. So, there are two step reactions. So, what happens in the first step is you have one third of the hydrogen sulphide combusted to form sulphur dioxide and water. So, instead of going with a single overall reaction this is broken up into two step reaction. The first part one third of the hydrogen sulphide is combusted to form sulphur dioxide and water. So, you have combusted and formed sulphur dioxide and water where well, delta H is minus 529 kilojoules per mole. In the second step what happens is because why are we going for the second step? We need to understand that. Why not with a single step? Why partial? Because temperature is one of the most significant factor to consider when trying to get the desired ratio of H2S to SO2. Because in the second step the sulphur dioxide you know it will again get converted it reacts with H2S. So, not H2 all H2S is combusted some amount of H2S remains that H2S reacts with sulphur dioxide to form elemental sulphur. But in order to have maximum conversion an excess of H2S is used. So, problem is what is the sugar temperature if it is too low if it is too low less than 925 degrees Celsius kinetic difficulties may arise the rate of the reaction may drop. If it is more high let us say at 600 degrees Celsius generation of SOX and NOX will create and it will lead to increased catalytic deactivation as well as corrosive or acidic assault on the furnace. So, the temperature of the furnace walls must be maintained between 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. This should be possible if the temperature of the flame can be kept under tight control. So, what they do is they do a uh, initially the first reaction is a non catalytic reaction, it is irreversible in nature and a limited amount of oxygen is used. So, what happens 
at high temperature you have high oxidation rates of H2S. So, the sulphur dioxide formation favors thermodynamically. So, transformation of hydrogen sulphide into sulphur is a chemical equilibrium process and the theoretical research indicates that the reaction temperature must be as low as possible. So, it means uh, if I want to draw this a uh, conversion percentage conversion percentage conversion with temperature. So, if I draw two lines here 500 degrees Celsius to 1000 degrees Celsius. So, the conversion if suppose from here it is 50 to 100 percent conversion. Conversion means the H2S conversion. So, it means uh, it follows something like this. So, it means at lower temperatures at this lower temperatures this lower temperatures reaction temperature is kept low so that H2S is converted to sulphur. But the issue is in reality this necessitate keeping the reactor temperature slightly above the sulphur dew point to avoid sulphur condensation on the catalyst. Because we have a catalyst phase which is solid in nature. So, it should not be something like that you go lower and lower close to 500 degrees Celsius and then you find out that uh, uh, you have I am sorry this is not 5000 degrees Celsius it is 500 Kelvin just uh, you may just correct it 500 Kelvin to 1000 Kelvin. So, if it is less than 500 Kelvin you may get sulphur, but it is in a liquid state. So, if it is a liquid state it means it may drop on the catalyst and the catalyst may deactivate. The second reason why this is kept at a slight higher temperature because as I told you hydrolysis of COS and CS2 needs to be performed during the catalytic states demanding a temperature greater than 230 degrees Celsius in order to achieve a reasonable level of conversion. Taking into account the thermodynamics and kinetics of both the Claus reaction and the hydrolysis of carbon sulphides, the first converter in that temperature in a typical 3 reactor Claus unit is 230 to 250 degrees Celsius for maximum carbonyl sulphide and carbon disulphide conversion. The second band, the second one is kept little bit below this temperature, the third one below the first one and and also below than the second reactor for maximum H2S to SO2 reaction. So, the output temperatures of the first reactors are greater than the second or third reactor and it is around close to 340 degree Celsius. So, let us see the flow diagram and the overall reaction. So, the overall reaction is this from the second part that is the sulphur dioxide reacts with the remaining parts of hydrogen sulphide to form sulphur and water. So, this is hydrogen sulphide reacting with sulphur dioxide formed in the first reaction step to form elemental sulphur and water, but this is a catalytic reaction it is reversible in nature it is less exothermic compared to the first reaction. So, if you see these numbers are lesser than the previous one. So, what are the take home message it is at high temperature equilibrium shifts towards reactant because it is exothermic in nature which will lead to a low sulphur recovery. In order to overcome this low sulphur recovery we use a series of catalytic converters this is we require 3 reactors in series. So, all these reactors are named by the they are called as Claus reactors. So, the entire Claus process is a sum of 2 reaction in the first reaction there is partial combustion of the H2S to sulphur dioxide gas in the second reaction then again reaction of hydrogen sulphide gas with sulphur dioxide to produce elemental sulphur and water. So, let us see the flow sheet. So, for the flow sheet the important aspect we have discussed is the Claus catalyst. Now, as I told you catalyst is an important uh, part an inherent part of this Claus process and this catalyst should have certain criteria or they should fulfill certain condition. They should have high mechanical strength because we are talking about temperatures close to 250, 300 degrees Celsius. They should have high catalytic activity and high specific area. The particle size is important of this catalyst so as to avoid maximum pressure drops within the reactor. It should be low cost as large amount are used. It should be highly active at relatively low temperature as the reaction rate has to be sufficient at the temperature used in the last reactors. Because in as you go ahead you have the reactions in each of the reactors where the temperature falls 
The temperature falls means this catalyst should be highly active and finally the, it should have high resistance to attrition in the presence of water. So conventionally the catalyst is bauxite, the alumina, but there have been research where vanadium pentoxide is found to be 16 times as reactive as titania and 72 times as reactive as aluminia. So both this titania and vanadium pentoxide are found to be highly reactive for the conversion of this hydrogen sulphide gas, but still they are not used. The primary reason is the lifespan. The lifespan of this V2O5 is not feasible, but titania is still in use, but most of them use the model plants use this alumina based catalyst. So the overall the class catalyst can be divided into three categories, the standard aluminas, the, the original catalyst, the class alumina with a particular ultra micro porosity because the porosity of the catalyst is important because you need to have sufficient pore size where the reactants, here reactants if I want to say it is like the sulphur dioxide is one of the reactant, it should go near the surface, have the reaction and then H2O should also put be available on the surface, they will react and they dissolve and they will form the elemental sulphur. Now aluminous promoted or there may be second category of catalyst which is the aluminous promoted with alkaline or alkaline earth oxide, sodium oxide. So what this, I mean these are uh, particular modifiers which they add with alumina, sodium oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, iron or nickel sulphur titania. So they have different functions, they improve the resistance of alum alumina to sulphation. Because this, uh, this COA, uh, COA, they may form, let us say they react with the ox sulfur dioxide present to form um, something like if I want to write calcium sulphate, okay. So the issue is the calcium oxide which is uh, present, so to remove that, so avoid this, they add some certain modifiers. So this modifier sometimes are also not working if I want to write down here. So let me again, so this modifiers, this calcium oxide, MgO, NaTO, the primary reason, the primary reason why they are added in the catalyst is that to have or to improve the resistance of alumina to sulfation and cooking. So we do not want the particular catalyst to have a reaction with the sulphur dioxide gas, so that is why the reaction is called sulphation or coking. So prevent these, these modifiers are added or then may be non-promoted or calcium promoted titania based catalyst. So what are the three different categories? Just recollect the alumina based catalyst, then alumina with promoter and then in there is non-promoted or calcium promoted titania. So this is the class process, so what is the class process here? So if you see. Uh, this is a burner, this stage is the burner. So in the burner, this is a furnace or a burner, the waste heat boiler. So you have the boiler feed water coming here inside, the boiler feed water. So in that you generate the high pressure steam. So air is, the first reaction takes place here, okay. So your H2S plus oxygen, so it will give SO2 plus uh, so your partial combustion okay plus H2O. So partial combustion takes place, so heat is released and heat released is taken up by the boiler feed water. Now then uh, not all H2S is getting converted, so here you can control the H2S to SO2 formation. How will you control? You can control this ratio through the use of this flow of air. Okay. So once you control the flow of air, you can control the ratio of H2S to SO2. Now what happens? You have a mixture of H2S plus SO2 plus COS plus CS2 because these are also generated in this when the reactions because this to make there are many such reactions happening. I have written only one such reaction. So there is complex phenomena where many such reactions are possible. So what happens is you put this boiler feed water, this is one condenser, it is simply a condenser. So this reactions also takes place in this, this is the carbon carbonyl sulphide flex with water, 
to form hydrogen sulfide gas and CO2. So this everything then uh, uh, goes because we remove the heat because the uh, this particular heat is very very high here. So you remove the heat in this condenser, you produce low pressure steam and then uh, heat it little bit and send it to the first clause reactor. So in this clause reactor what it what happens is you are converting H2S, you are reacting H2S and SO2 to elemental sulphur and water okay all these three reaction whether this this or this all these three reaction clause reactor occurs when the clause reactor occurs the products falls down it is condensed if it condenses the liquid sulphur will come down because if we lower the temperature it will come down and it is collected in a sulphur pit right so remaining h2s uh, suppose everything is not consumed and H2S and SO2 goes in the class reactor 2 because if you see the first reaction only 50 to 60 percent is converted, the remaining 2 remaining 48 percent overall the conversion is 98 percent. So again the same process happens here the clause reactor, then again the remaining products effluent products and goes in the third reactor while the byproducts that is the sulphur comes out the elemental sulphur is dropped to the sulphur pit. Finally, goes to the class reactor 3 where again condenser 4 is there and you have the effluent the tail gas. The tail gas is usually incinerated. So, for quality control purpose is QC is quality control this H2S to SO2 in this should be equal to 2 H to 1 okay. So, this ratio 2 H to 1 can be maintained if you control the flow rate of air. So, flow rate of air if you control that will control the high H2S to SO2 ratio. Finally, you are collect the remaining part in this sulphur pump, the liquid sulphur, then it, you get the main product. So, what are the uh, key points? The series of catalytic converters provide up to 95 percent sulphur recovery. The tail gas may contain small amount of carbon disulfide and carbonyl sulphide. Before emitting the tail gas, this H2S to SO2 ratio should be 2 H to 1. This is very, very important because if it is not 2 H to 1, for optimal conversion you may not get 95 percent sulphur recovery. It means the amount of tail gas you will have in incinerator will be more than the permissible value. So worldwide around 1500 plants produce sulphur with an average capacity of 100 tons per day. Now what to do with the tail gas? Now tail gas you can incinerate directly but still why to incinerate because you have almost close to 5 percent sulphur in that. So, these tail gas from the class plant needs to be retreated for better sulphur recovery close to 100 percent. So, this company Shell, com Shell company has devised Shell class off treating process or off gas treating process. This is process which actually converts 95 to 98 percent and this super class process is developed by a university in Netherlands. It is called super class process which is quite similar to the class process except you have a selective oxidation reactor at the last reactor phase. And then you have liquid redox sulphur recovery, you recover the remaining sulphur with the help of redox reactions. It is only suitable when the output is low, when the output is low. But these two are very important and usually the, the Scott process is widely used in industry. So, what is the Scott process? Scott process. So, you have a line burner, but you send the reducing gas. What is this reducing gas? Reducing gas is CO plus H2 or syngas, whatever. So, the reducing gas, this is produced by the incomplete combustion, right. So, you have fuel gas, you react with this air. So, this is the clause tail gas, which means it coming from the clause process. It, this comes from the clause process, okay. So, Again uh, you have the reaction, so this is actually they are burnt, all the gases are burnt and when they are burnt this is called the Scott reactor. So in the Scott reactor the gases, so what will be the gases present here, the, the mainly they will be all be converted to sulphur dioxide or it will be converted to H2S, so all the gases, okay, all the gases they will be coming up here. Okay. So, you need to capture all the gases here, increase the temperature. This Scott reactor, what it does, it will send the H2S, primarily H2S, it will send the H2S 
and the let us say you have the other CO2 gas. So, uh, prior to this you may have a number of other components when you burn it, it will be CO2, you will have COS, you will have CH2, everything is sent here in this reactor they will convert everything back to H2S and CO2. Okay. So, it means what you do you send it to a cooling tower, you cool this down, if there is some formation of sulphur you take it down from here, then uh, you take it down to the absorber regenerator section. So, what is the absorber? As I told you, you take a ethanolamine or alkanolamine solution. So, you insert it into a absorption tower. The absorption tower what it will do? It has two gases the CO2 and H2S. So, a, a amine is chosen in such a manner that it reacts with H2S but does not react with CO2. So, the CO2 gas comes out from here and it is burnt off. So, the H2S gas along with the, the alkanolamine passes to the regenerator section. The regeneration section again you pass as a stripper, you pass low pressure steam. So, when you pass stream, the acid gas that is the H2S is actually separated, it gets extracted from the alkanolamine solution and the remaining solution that is the lean alkanolamine phase transfers the heat to the incoming bottom product of the absorber and it is sent to the absorber where it is again counter currently made to contact with the incoming feed from the Scott reactor. So, in this way you get H2S and the sulphur recovered close to 98 percent. Okay. So, this is the Scott process. Similarly, you have a super class process. Super class process is similar. Only issue is here we have the reaction furnace, we have the waste heat boiler. So, what you do? You have the same reaction happening as for class process. Okay. So, the temperature is kept about 1300 Kelvin. So, again uh, you entering temperature is 520 Kelvin. So, the temperature will progressively reduce from reactor 1, reactor 2, reactor 3, it will reduce in this direction. So, this is higher, then it's higher the temperature of operation. Okay. So, the class reactor again the same reaction takes place. So, you have this H2S converting to elemental sulfur and water. So, uh, the elemental sulfur gets pick, uh, picked up in the sulfur pit. Again, the second Kellogg's reactor temperatures is lower than 520 Kelvin. It's then temperature here is further lower than this temperature in the reactor two. Again, you condense it, cool it down. The only issue here is in a super class process, you have to for the quality control, you have to see the H2S is only 0.8 to 3 volume percent. So again, how will you convert this? Again, you can alter this air flow rate. So, here you can control the H2S flow rate to be around 0.8 to 3. So, what they will do is again this H2S, the remaining H2S. Now, you may have other gases also here, COS, CS2, many other gases or CO2. So, uh, H2S plus these gases here, but the H2S should be this much volume percent. The issue is it takes care, it uses a clause reactor 3. What is this clause reactor 3? It is a selective oxidation reactor. Okay. Selective oxidation reactor, it will only react with this. So, the catalyst should be selective and it will react to H2S only. So, if it reacts with H2S, so this H2S directly it will react with oxygen. So, this reaction if an condenser in the reactor 3, so this is what the when some air is put inside this reactor 3. So, when air gets inside 3, the H2S plus O2 gets converted to elemental sulphur plus water. So, here only issue is the H2S, the, the catalyst is selective in nature. So, it would not convert this carbonyl sulphide, carbon disulphide, carbon dioxide. It will only convert this. So, it means uh, if you want to talk about the efficiency, the efficiency of the Scott process will be higher than the super class process. Okay. So, it just the difference is same process, same methodology, only the last reactor is the 
selective catalytic reactor. So, it is a selective oxidation reactor which will only oxidize the hydrogen sulphide gas to elemental sulphur. Then the third part is for small scale processes, the third part for this is the Scott we have seen, we have the, we have a, first we have seen the Scott process, then we have seen super class, this is the third process which is the sulphur recovery process, liquid sulphur, redox sulphur recovery. So, this is for small scale processes less than 10 ton a day sulphur production. The gas flow rate or composition are not constant here like class process, you cannot actually set up the uh, class process or some other process to recovery of the elemental sulphur. They are less applicable, but it is economical compared to class process. So, here the catalyst is added to the amine solution to get directly elemental sulphur from H2S. So, this is the reaction which is occurring that is 2 H2S plus O2 is equal to elemental sulphur plus water directly. So, in this case since the output the flow rate are very less, so vanadium based catalyst you can use in the redox, the liquid redox sulphur recovery. So, an important outcome of this entire study which we have seen today is the Scott plants provide best sulphur recovery among all discussed processes. Can you tell why? The reason is this. Other sulphur compounds like carbon disulphide, carbonyl sulphide are converted to hydrogen sulphide in the presence of hydrogen and catalyst. So, it means that uh, in the Scott process, in the Scott process, the Scott reactor, the Scott reactor, it will convert the other sulphur products such as COS, CS2 or to H2S. But in the super class process, this is not true. Because of this, all no sulphur is getting wasted in the sulphur recovery unit which is in the case of Scott process. So, that is why this Scott process is always good and it gives the best catalyst or the best conversion among all. So, we come to the conclusion of this lecture. So, I will advise you to go through the flow sheets. These flow sheets are all adapted from the book of Moline and uh, you should also visit this article that is the class catalysis and hydrogen H2S selective oxidation. So, here if you see you go to this link, if you are able to access it, it will actually discuss the mechanism how the catalyst is working in the high temperature. So, how sulfur dioxide are getting which active sites all this. So, those who are interested in the reaction engineering part, they can have a look at this second article. So, so we, con we conclude this lecture and we have finished the, the elemental sulfur. We have seen the class process, super class process, cot process and also seen the sulfuric acid formation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.